Richard Simmons is a complicated man. This is just a brief chapter of my uh, Richard Simmons fitness cruise. I did a new self-help program every month trying to find an established guru in each field. And I realized that I hadn't done any regular cardiovascular exercise since I was 18. And tried. To, I thought, well, who is there in the American fitness world that's been a guru the longest? And there was Jack Lane, who is about 97 and no longer doing any kind of workshops that I could participate in. And then there was the Richard Simmons Cruise to Lose, which is a car carnival cruise. Um, with 2,000 people on it, and then, and then a section, a small section of those were, the, were Richard's group. My friend Jan, who's here tonight, came with me on that cruise, um, and this is just, just such a small glimpse of Richard, uh, day two. I roll out of bed at 7.15, lace up my new exercise shoes, fill up my official water bottle emblazoned with a silhouette of Richard, and pin on my name tag. Jan has already made it clear that she won't be attending any of the 7.30 a.m. Rise and Shine with Richard classes because she's on vacation. I'm one of the last ones to arrive in the Rome Lounge, the ship's main showroom, and for the first time, I see the whole group assembled. 225 people, nearly all white women between the ages of 35 and 60, wearing colorful exercise clothing and carrying the black Richard Simmons tote bag we received last night. The tote also boasts Richard's uncanny silhouette, um, and it was his signature move is called an angel, which is kind of like this. And so just, or kind of off to the side, more like that. And so everything had Richard. And then at the closing night party, there were watermelons carved with the angel and ice carved with the angel. Um, I think I just pulled something in my back doing that. Um, all right, um, the tote also um, contains an alarming number of products for dry mouth, including lozenges, spray, toothpaste, and some sort of special dry mouth gel. Also a tablet of pre-printed permission slips to use for your children at school. I, every single word of this is 100% true. The layout of the room makes it an awkward space in which to exercise with rows of upholstered benches and immobile cocktail tables, but the group makes do, spreading across the theater's aisles and balconies, arms distance apart, taking up the entire room. For the very prompt, there are spaces on stage with Richard. This is obviously a hot commodity and probably fills up before daybreak. At first, I didn't understand it when I read in my binder that Richard would show up a half hour before every class for autographs and pictures. I can imagine him doing this for the first couple of days, or perhaps once during the first class and once during the last class, but I had underestimated his power, severely. This morning, the line to talk to Richard, who is perched on the edge of the stage in black shorts and a black crystal studded tank top, stretches down the aisle about 50 people deep. I overhear some, someone say that a woman in upstate New York does all of his tank top bejeweling. <laughs> I take a seat on a bench and keep my eyes fixed on Richard. He seems genuinely happy, taking time with each person, wrapping his arms and sometimes legs around them for pictures, <laughs> or placing a hand on their arm as they speak. People bring him lots of gifts. I watch him unfold an afghan, gush over it, hold up a framed photo, kiss someone, Jan and I were not alone with the kissing. The first night we saw Richard, big kisses from Richard. Um, nearly everybody gets a kiss upon arriving at his side. And then again, when leaving, Richard Simmons has probably kissed more women than Gene Simmons. <laughs> when he has finally spoken and posed with, squeezed and smooched the last person in line, he grabs the microphone and walks out onto the apron of the stage. Good morning, everybody! He yells, his feet planted firmly in ballet's first position. Sorry if you're new to the speakers. Um, uh, he heels together, toes pointed out, bending at the waist. The group answers back, automatically adopting a goofy schoolgirl lilt to our voices. Good morning, Richard! It just seems like the obvious way. But it's not enough for Richard. He gets a little more shrill. I said good morning, everybody! We crank, it up, we crank it up a notch. Good morning, Richard! Appeased, and without saying another word, Richard cues the sound booth and the classical music swells. Richard leads us in a series of flowing, low-impact stretches. It feels really good to be doing this, to be up early and moving. This is when I have my first of many arms over the head 
um, revelations. I realize in this moment, as I move in unison with over 200 people in the showroom of a discount cruise ship, that I sometimes go for days without even simply reaching my arms up over my head. I'm sure a lot of these people do too. I think of John Gray's assertion, I had gone to a um, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus seminar in Atlanta, and John Gray, who was the only one who was genu genuinely crazy this whole year, um, he, ha he says the only way he exercises now is to just shake his body around, and then he's like, we're going to Africa, just play the drums, and let's strike a gong in China. You know, and this is this how he exercises. Um, totally crazy when you're in like a hotel conference room and then we're all just like doing this. Um, I thought of John Gray's assertion made during that wild shaking globe hopping exercise session he did in Atlanta that symphony conductors have the longest lifespans because their arms are always over their heads. After the stretches, Richard tells us to take a seat and get out our binders. He sits cross-legged on the edge of the stage and holds the microphone low on his chest by gently pressing it between flat palms, his back very straight. He explains the challenges of the cruise, including the cocktails, the food, the infamous chocolate buffet. They dip everything in chocolate on this cruise, he says. They dip newborn babies in chocolate, and they're delicious. <laughs> Suddenly, he pops up onto his little white shoes and says, okay, everybody, let's get on the scale. There is an audible gasp throughout the room. I'm just kidding, he says. Boy, you should have seen your faces when I said that. You were all thinking, but Richard, I haven't pooped yet. <laughs> People laugh.